Now, if you were watching last night, you'd have seen that Woodhill Prison in Milton Keynes has given our cameras exclusive access to see how they're trying to improve suicide and self-harm rates. It's been revealed that almost 500 of the 600 men held there are suffering from mental health problems. The governor, Nicola Marfleet, says giving them hope is crucial and something that staff are working hard on, but some say not enough is being done. Here's Anna Todd. Behind the walls of this high security prison in Milton Keynes, hundreds of men, most of them struggling with their mental health. When I last looked, we measured it at about 80%. So 80% of our 600 men will have some level of mental health needs, right up to the most serious, where we have very, um, very ill individuals who have been brought into custody and then we need to get them that assessment and get them out to secure hospitals in some cases. In recent years, Woodhill Prison has been in the spotlight for all the wrong reasons. Most recently, a damning inspection report saying high levels of boredom had led to a rise in violence and self-harm. And in 2016, seven inmates took their own lives, the highest suicide rate in UK prisons that year. Since then, there's only been one suicide, but many attempts have been thwarted by staff. The governor, Nicola Marfleet, says mental health support is better. Good staff and inmate relationships make a difference. When we have men in our care who need extra support, it makes a massive difference that the prison officers know them. They know them by name, they understand a little bit of their story, they understand the risk. So one of the things we like to be aware of is specific trigger points, um, anniversaries of deaths or um, particular issues around that individual where we can just understand a little bit more, talk to them about it and also keep an eye on them. But the father of Thomas Morris, a 31-year-old inmate who took his own life in June 2016, is not convinced enough is being done. Both inside prisons and outside, there's a huge challenge of mental health and, and, and drug abuse. And I feel it should perhaps be separated from, from crime and, and treated a little differently. And, and we, we, we should try and perhaps gain clearer understanding of, of the nature of the crime. And, treat it accordingly. There is success. The success in other countries where they've, they've managed this problem a, a lot more effectively than we have. Since our report last night, a mum of a young prisoner with autism contacted us to say Woodhill is not equipped or educated to respond to mental health issues. She said there is absolutely nothing put in place for autism at Woodhill. Their misunderstanding of this condition has left my son suicidal and severely depressed. The governor of Woodhill Prison told us she recognises the gap here and autism awareness training is due to be rolled out imminently. She added that mental health training is ongoing, urging officers to refer up if they're not sure how to act on their concerns. Anna Todd, BBC Look East. Well, Dr Graham Durkin is from the Centre for Mental Health, which has researched prison suicide. Um, Dr Durkin, when 500 of the 600 men at this prison have mental health needs, how realistic is it that they can all get tailored support that they need? Well, I think things have to radically change. I think we, uh, there's definitely a need to expand mental health services and particularly there needs to be a greater offer of psychological talking therapies. That's very important. I think we also need to to um, change the role of the prison officer. But I think there's something we shouldn't forget, and that's that we've had significant cuts in frontline staff. So between 2010 and 2017, uh, about 25% of frontline prison officer staff were, were posts were cut. Now we are recruiting to that, so we will get the numbers back up again, but what we've lost is some of the jail craft, the years of experience that some of those people who were made redundant had. Um, so I think that the, the quickest win we can get is to radically overhaul prison officer training. You know, it's really part of their bread and butter to work with very vulnerable people. And there's a whole range of vulnerabilities, as you, your news report has revealed. So there's lots of, it's about 90% of prisoners we expect to have uh, a mental health pr problem, a personality disorder, um, you know, a, a drug misuse problem. So that's the actual national statistics. So 80% is, if anything, is an underestimate. It isn't um, and there's a whole range of other problems in there. Sorry. It, sorry, it, it isn't just the, the prisoners themselves who, who are suffering with poor mental health, though. We, we know that um, across the prison sector, pr the mental health of prison staff has been a concern. Um, the governor at Woodhill was getting a resignation a week at one point. Um, 
Do you think the in, entire system in prisons needs an overhaul to improve mental well-being across the board? Yeah, absolutely. We did a bit of work with the Howard League for Penal Reform and actually we weren't looking into staff wellbeing but one of the major findings was just how challenging it is to work. The, the, you know, these are very stressful environments, they're quite violent environments. We've had an increase in violence, we're at record levels. Uh, you know, 10,000 or so attacks on staff, so 26 uh, attacks a day somewhere in the prison system on staff. So it's, it is deeply stressful and there's very little opportunity for them to reflect, to, to get debriefed about that. Healthcare staff working in prisons have that opportunity, most prison officers don't. Dr. So Second. yeah, we definitely need to overhaul, they need a lot more support and you know, looking after their well-being as well. I'm but we sorry. do need to get... I I'm so sorry to interrupt, but I'm afraid time is against us. We must leave it there. Thank you so much for your input tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and tomorrow we'll be looking at life after prison. The government, we know, is giving more money to a pilot project in Northampton that helps to stop women re-offending. That to come on tomorrow night.